Hey everyone, I'm here to do a review on a series based on a franchise that we all grew up with and loved. See, back in 1987, well actually back in 1984, 25 years ago, Kevin Eastman and Peter Lard introduced us to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Three years later, Film Roman Studios, along with Mirage Studios, took that concept and made it into a animated cartoon series which ran for about 10 years. Then, before I get into what I'm going to review, in 2003, Kevin and Peter revived the series along with, I believe, Mirage Studios and Four, four, and, uh, four Kids Entertainment and as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a more darker look at the character. A more darker, more, um, basically a series that was more closer to the original feel of, of what they had, what they had planned for the Turtles at the beginning than what the uh, original cartoon series was. Now in between there, between that and the original cartoon series, they had movies, of course, three live action movies and a CGI movie in 2007. But there was one thing that some fans basically do not want to acknowledge. One thing that fans feel should have never been made. Now I'm not talking about the making of the Come Out of the Shell tour because I already reviewed that in my response to critic, to Nostalgia Critics and Angry Video Game Nerds uh, dual review on the Come Out of the Shell tour making video and tour itself. No, no, I'm talking about something else that and some fans consider just as bad and should have never been made in the first place. In fact, even one of the original creators, I think it's Kevin Eastman or Peter Laird, I can't think of which one, but one of the creators doesn't even want to acknowledge the existence, not only of the show, but they don't even want to acknowledge the existence of one of the characters that was introduced in the show. What's the show I'm talking about? Well, I'm talking about none other than Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation. That's right, Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation. This series was brought, back, was brought out in 1998-99, around 98-99, by, by Fox Kids Entertainment and Saban Entertainment in conjunction with Peter Lard, Lard and Kevin Eastman. The reason this was brought out, well, I guess, was to kind of finally give the fans at the time what they had wanted, a live-action series featuring the Turtles. Because they figured, hell, because they probably figured, hell, if the live action movies can do well, so can the live action series. I mean, the setting, I mean, heck, even the setting, like where the turtles live, the setting was the same setting used in the movies. That's right, in the, first, in the two, second and third movies. It's the same sewer place. A sewer home. The only difference is the turtles' design. As you can see, some of them with the exception of Leonardo and Donatello, some of them still have the bandanas the way they are, but they're a little bit more different. I don't know why, they just are. But maybe it's because the turtles in here are not teenagers anymore. They're actually grown-ups. That's right. That's why you don't see Teenage Mutant anymore. But there's another difference. Another thing that, you know, has made a lot of fans want to not even acknowledge this, you know, uh, this version of the franchise existed. Not even acknowledge that one character. And it's because of that one character, Venus de Milo. That's right. This character right here is the only female turtle character ever known for existence. Now, from what the backstory on the character is, which is kind of weird, because it, which is kind of a little weird, because we all remember the original story. Splinter fighting the turtles, the four turtles in a glass jar, the mutating and all that. Never was there acknowledgement of a fifth turtle. Until this series came along. And when this series came along, the acknowledgement of a fifth turtle, oh, was acknowledged. In other words, there were not four, but five turtles. And the fifth turtle, being Venus, 
floated downstream into China. I guess still, guess just like the, uh, just like the original turtles, she was also covered in news, and she and she was discovered by Shinobi Master, who brought her up as his own daughter, which is kind of weird. But anyway, getting back to the story, getting back to the series itself. Basically, what happens is the Shinobi Master dies, and he asks for her to go to New York and live and find. Uh, Master Splinter, and thus live not only with Splinter but with the Turtles as well. Now the Turtles, most importantly Michelangelo, though when they first meet her, are surprised that there is a girl turtle or a female turtle. And Michelangelo, of course, is actually excited about that because this is something he's been wanting to have a female turtle in the ranks, or at least someone of the opposite sex. Now, of course, Venus has been trained and mastered in the arts of shinobi and dreamscaping, so she know so she can help out in ways no one else can. So, and one of the ways she helps out, oh, and this is tied up because of a new villain coming in, is she helps defeat the Shredder. In fact, she is the one that defeats the Shredder in this version of this, in this spinoff of the franchise. And not only does she help beat him, but she also helps lead the turtles on a rescue mission for Splinter in the Dreamscape realm, where he's being held captive by, of course, the Dragon Lord, the new villain. That's right, a new villain. This guy, right here, is the new villain. That's right, this guy right here. Now, although the now, I don't know exactly how the rest of the series ended, because I never had a chance to catch it all. But I was either in school at the time, I'm, or I just had other things to do. But all I know is that this series only lasted for one season. And again, like I said, one of the creators, I don't know which one, doesn't even want to ignore, is, doesn't like this series so much, doesn't want to acknowledge its existence or the existence of Venus even though the series and Venus have a small, have a strong, small court following all over the internet. And that's no lie. In fact, I think the reason some fans don't like Venus, and this is just my opinion, is because they were already given an established female character on the team in the comic books produced by Archie Comics. That character being Ninjara the Fox, who turned out to be, who became Raphael's girlfriend. I think that's why some fans, I think that's why it was a little hard for some fans, including even I think Kevin or Peter, to accept Venus because fans were already established to someone like Nick Job. I think they would rather have her in the series than Venus, but to me, it really didn't matter. But I think another thing they hope that kind of killed off the interest for the series, especially for the creators of the Turtles, was the fact that they crossed them over with the Power Rangers and Space Series. That's right. That's right. Pa There's a two-part Power Rangers in Space series. I think one of the first three or four episodes where they cross over with the total. It's unbelievable. And it's all because the Power Rangers made villainous, kind of cast some kind of hypnotic spell on them. And it's only until they fly through a kind of like a warp cloud or storm cloud in space that the spell is broken. And the Turtles help the Rangers defeat the villainess of Stratema and her minions and such. And then we see the Turtles flying, all, flying in space on surfboards. But uh, I think, honestly, that might have been what killed it. To be quite honest. Or killed the interest. But again, like I said, it does have a small cult following. Strong, small cult, cult following today along with Venus. I think it's because Venus is a distance that it has that problem. It's not major like a lot of other series, but it's, it's there. You know it is. And this is the only cassette tape that I know they brought out. This was actually the, I think it was the um, three 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 part mini series, I believe. Yeah, the three part mini series that began. It. So overall, you know, to me, I didn't really think it was that bad. I mean, I know, you know, give them effort, they tried. Excuse me for a second, I've got to check the time here.
60, okay? But again, like I said, give them, you know, give them props, you know, they tried, you know, they gave effort to it. But uh, overall, it wasn't that bad of a series, like I said, and perhaps maybe something like this will come around again. Maybe even better, though. And uh, that's all I have to say. Till next time, I'm Brian saying God bless, peace, and take care.